Hey, Rooney. Hello. Hey, have you been to a hotel lately? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Well, where did you stay? We stayed at the Silver Legacy in Reno. Oh, for Hot August Nights. Hot August Nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, on today's show, okay. we're going to share some things you should never, ever do when staying at a hotel, Ronnie. Okay. And some of these are so disgusting. <laughs> You're not going to want to miss it. It's next on Men Are So Smart. So if you frequently stay at hotels, there are things you could be doing that are putting your health, safety, and personal information, and even sometimes your life at risk. So here is a list of some things you should never do when staying at a hotel, Ronnie. Okay, well, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. I've glanced ahead. I've done almost all of these. Oh, you're guilty? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear their stories. <laughs> this first one, uh -huh. don't pay with cash or a debit card. Okay. I use a debit card all the time. Yeah, I yep. do too. Why? All right. Why? Well, first of all, you pay with cash, you'll have a much harder time disputing your bill if you have to. Oh. Uh, even paying with a debit card may make it difficult for you to dispute charges on your bill. So then the question becomes, why would I need to dispute charges on my bill? Well, according to ABC News, you could end up being a target of identity theft. Another reason is that the hotel bills often have hidden charges, unexpected fees. Uh, many New York hotels located near Times Square are now charging an extra $25 destination fee. Uh, some properties add on resort fee for amenities, even when you're not staying at the resort. Uh, then there's the obnoxious restocking fees for the macadamia nuts you ate and couldn't bring yourself to walk a block to find food. Now, I, I will say this. Uh, at almost every hotel I've stayed at, uh -huh. there are even though they're, it's not a resort right. per se, they have a resort fee. It's ten bucks. <laughs> the, the, the one I, the couple of hotels I've stayed at. That's because you're staying there as a last resort, <laughs> and kind of it is, yeah. Uh, and they do. Some of them do charge destination fees, especially hot August nights. Yeah, I get it. So you're kind of stuck paying those. It does no good to dispute them. And if you ask them, and this was my biggest argument. Mm -hmm is they give you the price of the room of you know $149 and then they add on the destination fee and the resort fee on top of it. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of like it when they show the commercials, you know, come to Vegas or come to Reno or Tower or whatever and um, the rooms are just $79. Uh-huh. Right. Sure they are. <laughs> but they're 149 after fees. Right. Well, and then the, the worst part is so when I talked to the girl at the front desk and said what exactly is a resort fee? She says, it's a resort fee. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, so let me make sure I got it straight. It's a... So that resort it's fee... It's a fee? Yeah, is a, is a resort fee, you're saying. Oh, a fee. Okay. Glad glad we got that straightened out. Yeah, now that it's clear, I'll pay it. They gladly. can't explain it. No. It is just, it is what it is. <laughs> Next up is, don't steal anything. <laughs> I remember when I was about... 20 years old and dating someone and we stayed at a hotel we stole the robes <laughs> we thought they're here for us who, yeah. who else is going to wear them after us that price is built i mean the price <laughs> of the robe is built into the price of the room it's a robe fee yeah <laughs> it's absolutely fine to take certain things from a hotel room the complimentary soaps and shampoos and lotions and potions but please don't be tempted to take other things like towels and bathrobes. <laughs> we know that they may be oh so plush and luxurious, but it isn't worth it. First of all, it is wrong. Second, they will find out about it. And that means that you could be charged extra. Third, you could end up getting banned. Dun, dun, dun. Banned. That'd be bad. According to Travel and Leisure Magazine, NBC says the most major hotels have a computer database with a no-stay list of patrons who've stolen from them. Uh, these hotels are all too happy to share that information with other hotels. That could mean that even though you stole something from the Marriott, you could also end up getting banned from the Hilton. Fourth, and probably most important, is that it's a crime, and you could end up getting locked up 
like the woman in Nigeria who spent three months in prison in 2010 for stealing two towels from the Transcor Hilton Abuju Hotel. Oh, my God. Oh, everybody remembers that story, right? Yeah. What a great reference that was. <laughs> Why did I read it? Well, and I will say this. When we were in Hawaii, there's a hotel there, and I will not mention it by name. Okay. But it has the same initials as me. R.H., the Royal Hawaiian. Quite possibly. Let's not mention it, though. <laughs> And when I, and this happened uh, over, uh, this happened a long time ago. Statute of limitations is gone. Okay, good. But I did steal a uh, a washcloth because it was monogrammed oh, with yeah, those R initials. H. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I gotta have it. Uh, and the the rooms there are very expensive. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. All right. This next one. Uh huh. You don't restock the mini bar. Uh, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah, well, now don't get us wrong. It's totally okay to be thoughtful and leave behind little treats for the workers like mm. guests who left the fridge and cupboards stocked with groceries or the guest who said he buys a six-pack of beer, only drinks a few and leaves the rest behind in the mini fridge for the workers to divvy up. But what we're talking here is trying to take uh, or fake the hotel staff by replacing the liquor with half sif sipped bottle of Diet Coke. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Yeah. Uh, a consultant for La Galleria Hotel in New Orleans told Reader's Digest, this happens more often than you might think. Oh my. And those who do it still get charged for taking that $30 uh, two ounce bottle of spirits. Yeah. You know what, you should, they should have a lock that you can put on the mini bar if you're tempted at all to get up in the middle of the night and mm -hmm. open it and mm -hmm. grab something, you really need to do yourself a favor and just, like, yeah, chain yourself to the bed. Look, you know, if I'm getting away to a hotel, for whatever reason, uh, one of the things I'm going to pack in my suitcase, it could be a bottle of something. Right. You know? And some treats. And yeah, for sure. Yep. Cookies. Uh, um, Swedish fish. We always take Swedish fish and, cheese, and licorice. You know, and, something yeah. like that. Yep. So you're not even tempted to use the mini bar, but uh, it's the the prices are ridiculous. Oh, boy, don't order room service if the menu is dirty. Ew. Last month, uh, we mentioned that if the menus are at a restaurant or a mess, it's a sign that you're about to dine at a bad restaurant and you should find someplace else to eat. Well, the same thing goes for hotel room service. If the menu is dirty, don't order anything. That's according to the Travel Channel, who says that you should never order from room service if you notice that the pages are dirty or torn. Or stuck together. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, God, that's a picture I didn't need. But even if you do decide to place an order, uh, there are certain things you probably shouldn't order from room service anyway, regardless of the menu condition, because they don't hold up too well under steamy room service plates. These foods include scrambled eggs, Burgers, fried foods, steamed veggies, waffles, pizza, pastries, and pasta, or anything on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't leave much out right Couldn't there. Couldn't I have just said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, this next one. Again, I have violated this. Okay. Don't bring your pets. Okay. In, in my case, it wasn't a pet. It was actually my working dog. Oh yeah. When okay. I when I worked for the sheriff's department and had a canine, I worked the canine unit. Um, we went to a school. Uh, it actually was in Reno, where you had to bring your dogs, and you could the the school had kennels where you could you know keep your dog overnight. My dog wasn't used to being kenneled, mm -hmm. and there, we're not talking kennels. We're talking crates. Really, is what they were in. My dog wasn't used to being crated for long periods of time. And the hotel we were in, which I'll give them a props right here, it was the uh, uh, MGM Grand. And I'm sorry, uh, the Grand Sierra. It was the Grand oh, Sierra okay. in Reno. Uh -huh. They allow dogs on one floor there. It's one of the lower floors. It's like the second or third floor. But our my dog, since it was a trained and a well-behaved dog, I could go anywhere. And I was oh, up on wow. the 17th floor with my dog. Mm -hmm. She, extremely quiet, made no noise. She doesn't bark. She doesn't pee in the room. Uh, not a problem for the hotel. But again, yes, I violated that one. This goes on to say, unless you're in a pet-friendly friendly hotel, 
leave your furry friends behind, and don't think about sneaking them in either. No matter how well you think you've cleaned up after your pet, chances are the hotel staff will know that he or she was in there, and it could mean you'll be responsible for any cleaning fees associated with the uh, the hair, the smells, etc. And we know what the etc. is. Yeah, we do. That your pet left behind. Not to mention the hotel could end up finding about it before you leave. Like the time a front desk hotel worker went into a room and found four ladies gutting a seal. So? Hmm. I, you know what? What do they have against seal? I think he's a perfectly fine singer. Why did they have to gut him? Well, maybe it had something to do with the divorce. <laughs> uh, can't imagine how pissed the housekeeping staff was about that. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Oh, I, my. I don't know. Don't use the coffee pot. I can't wait to hear this. Well, this isn't one of those don't ever do this things, but it's one you definitely might want to keep in the back of your mind because a Super 8 worker once found something pretty disgusting in the coffee pot in a hotel room they were cleaning. Apparently, so oh no. <laughs> I just read ahead. Hey, uh, I just did too. <laughs> I got to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Apparently, Someone had pooped where the coffee grounds are supposed to go and made a pot of poop water. Mm. I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Mm. The worker poop threw water. the whole thing in the dumpster and went to the owner to ask for a new pot, but was told to get the old one and bleach it. Hmm. The worker quit right away. Yeah, I would have too. Good call. Yeah. Good call. All right, this is our list of things never to do in a hotel. Uh, don't use the throw pillows. Oh, this one gets me every time. That's yeah. so disgusting why they even have them on the bed. Yep. Don't ever sleep on them. In no. fact, toss them off your bed immediately. That's because they can harbor some pretty nasty germs. Yeah. If you notice the throw pillows on the bed or the couch have no removable sleeves, you can be sure they are never thoroughly cleaned. I hadn't really thought about that. Oh, yeah. But that's I true. Have. Um... So uh, the seasoned traveler said you can actually call ahead and have the throw <laughs> pillows removed from your room before you get there. That's not too anal. That's going a little <laughs> over the top, perhaps. Uh, maybe go to the 99 cent store and get some tongs and <laughs> pick them up and put, throw them, put them somewhere. But yeah. You know, and along with the throw pillows, let's add the bed cover too. The, oh boy. You know, uh, don't even lay on that. Pull that off there automatically. I don't, I don't think they've, I don't think they wash those ever. The bedspread. I doubt it. I don't think so. Don't use the please clean room sign. Why, you might ask? Well, sure, you want your room cleaned, but do you really want to announce to the whole world, especially to burglars, that your room full of valuable possessions is empty? No, hanging that sign up doesn't necessarily mean that the room is empty, but it is, most likely, and the thieves know that. So, if your room is in need of a good cleaning, try this instead. Call the front desk directly and ask them to send someone to clean your room. And you know what? Here's my feeling. If I'm only staying at a hotel for two days... It doesn't need to be cleaned. It doesn't need to be cleaned. No. I mean, maybe throw me a couple of fresh towels and right. we'll call it a day. And we do that typically. We never have them come in and clean the room. We hear them. We hear the maid outside. We'll stop her. We'll what? hand her two big towels and two washcloths and ask her if she can just replace them. And they will gladly do that. Yeah. Because they don't have to come in and clean the right, room. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, yeah. I mean, if you're making that much of a mess where you need the room cleaned after one day, yeah. maybe you should be in a motel. Do you, do you clean your own room every day? Well, there you go. No. 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 Uh, okay, next up. All right. Don't sleep on the ground floor or the top floor. Who can't, sleeps on the ground floor? Can't say I've ever done that. Well, sometimes you don't have a choice if it's like a two-story motel. Oh, yeah. Half the people are going to be on the ground. Half the people are going to be on the ground. That's true. Yeah, I guess I've done uh, that. According to The Sun, which uh, a Marine Corps veteran and former CIA detective said, it's best to avoid sleeping in the uh, on the ground floor and the top floor. Uh, it's because you're the most vulnerable in these rooms if, by chance, there's a terror attack. Okay. Uh, the ground floor is especially accessible to intruders, and the top floors do not allow any maneuvering room. Um, the first or second floors allow access for most third-world country emergency vehicles. 
Dwyer also recommends that guests re request a copy of the fire escape plan at check-in time. It's right on the door. It is. It's right on the exit, on the back side of Dumb the door. Dumbass. Yeah. And keep a small escape bag packed at all time. Okay. There's somebody who's... Not enjoying their a, vacation as much as they could paranoid. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's got right. paranoia. Uh, finally, on our list today, of things not to do at a hotel: don't use the hotel Wi-Fi to send sensitive information. See, now that's the key. Right. Because I, I if, use it all the time. If you're on vacation, there are times when you need to check your account. Right. So what they're saying here is maybe you should reconsider. It's incredibly easy to hack public Wi-Fi hotspots, so sending sensitive information is a definite no-no. You might as well be yelling your passwords and bank details down the hall. Instead, use encryption to shield your online activity when you're logging into your bank account or sending other sensitive information. Or if it's not something of the utmost importance, you could just wait until you get to a location with a more secure location. All these things are pretty scary especially when you think about the number of times you've done some of these things on the list and had no idea you were at risk, Ron. Yeah. And if you're looking for more practical hotel room advice, find out why you should always check under the covers, under the bed, and in the tub on a future episode of Men Are So Smart. Can't wait for that one. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've learned some stuff here. Um, <laughs> I still can't forget uh, stealing those robes. <laughs> we talked about it the whole way home. We were so paranoid. Do you, do you still have them? No. <laughs> no, this was many years ago. They have uh, turned into... What the heck is going on here? I think somebody, I think somebody wants me. The cat's out of the bag. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed the show today. Uh, Punky <laughs> wants to remind you that if you did, give it a thumbs up. And also, while you're there, subscribe to our channel. Move your tail. Subscribe to our channel. Fur everywhere now. You're not allergic, are you? <laughs> and just, just click the button and click the bell. That'll give you notifications each time a new show comes out. All right, Ronnie, uh, be sure to check out our website. It's menaresosmart.com. On there, you'll find lots of fun stuff, photos and blogs and uh, videos in addition to um, our new Fen Treasure page. So check that out. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And that's Punky. And we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. <laughs>